Hello everyone, welcome back to Automation and BMG Drive. My name is Tim, and today we're going to be building the Suzuki Jimny. Particularly, we're going to be reimagining it as a more powerful, more unstoppable vehicle than it already is. Because the Suzuki Jimny has about 100 horsepower. This thing, we're going to basically make a Suzuki Jimny truck. Basically, 2.0 essentially. This thing is supposed to be better in just about every way, maybe except for cost and maybe fuel economy, I'm not sure. We're going to do steel ladder chassis, we're going to do steel front longitudinal, I don't know, whatever's best for off-roading and stuff like that, and overall utility. Yeah, we're just going to do that right there, solid axle coil, solid axle leaf, and this spinning rotation that you see is the engine we're going to be using. It's loosely based off of the Darsanat V12, which is my most reliable engine I've ever made. And this thing right here is going to be powering our car. It makes 147 horsepower, we'll call it 150. And it makes about almost 200 pound-feet of torque. So yeah, it's pretty good. And it's also a really good engine when it comes to fuel economy as well. Probably getting about like 35 miles to the gallon. But yeah, right now we're just modifying the shape of the car, giving it a slightly larger bed, making sure the cabin is nice and spacious, widening out the fenders so we can get bigger tires on this. And of course, it's going to be a 4x4. Four four. And for transmission, I'm probably just going to do a simple automatic, whichever one is um, heavy, because I don't want this thing to be too lightweight. We'll do a six speed auto. Top speed of 120 miles per hour, and we'll just do all this stuff right here. I don't know, we're probably just going to keep it on open differential and all that. We're going to give it big old tires right here, really big. 315s in the rear, 245s in the front, and it's looking wonderful. We're going to be making the tires overall larger. We're going to give it radial off-road compound in order to make this thing good. Actually, no, we're going to do all-terrain. We're going to do vented discs in the front. We might change it later on. I'm not entirely sure. We're going to do vent uh, drum discs in the rear. That's what we're going to do. Not discs, but drum brakes. I got that mixed up. And yeah, we're going to make sure this thing is high quality because I don't want these brakes fading. Off-road skid tray, of course. High airflow for cooling. The massive... 2.25 liter inline three, which if it existed, would technically make it the largest inline three ever put into a production car, because currently the record is held by Koenigsegg with the TFG that's two liters, and I don't know, we're just going to do this convertible type thing just for the sake of it. We're going to do probably basic interior and all that, basic everything. We don't want this thing being crazy expensive, and we'll do... Um, I don't know, standard CD. Now, for our steering system, we're going to do whichever one is reliable and lightweight because I don't want this thing being too heavy, but I also don't want it being too light. We'll give it decent safety, like advanced 2000s. Yeah, we'll give it that. Higher quality, higher weight overall. And um, yeah, I'm just going to see how heavy will it be. Okay, yeah. Just about 2,700 pounds, nice, not too heavy, but also not too light. We're going to give it simple things so it has less chances to break down and all sorts of other stuff like that. And we're going to be building this thing to be a good vehicle. It's tuned for utility and off-road at the same time. And yeah, this vehicle itself is going to be wonderful, in my opinion, because... This thing is just a truly incredible car, all things considered. So far, it is. It's not the best thing ever now. Okay, we can't make it that high. It just looks goofy. We'll lower it down some, and there, it looks pretty good already. And yeah, now we're going to need to get ready for fixtures, because that is personally my favorite part when making these vehicles. Fixtures, because I can spend as much time as I want designing them. We'll make the bed slightly larger. And yeah... There it is. We sold nearly 20,000 of these things, which is really good. And now onto the fixtures. We're going to paint it yellow, just like the Suzuki Jimny press color. We're going to give it painted tires as well. Square headlights. We're going to put them in the grill. And also, we're going to be doing a Jeep-style grill, this time with 10 little square rectangle things inside of it. And... Yeah, that little engine page that showed up, that was just me tweaking the engine some. And yeah, we're going to modify the front end in order to get good air cooling. We're going to put some fog lights down there. 
We're also going to put some rear fuel tanks as well. We're going to put some running boards, a license plate, some lights. Yeah, those are incredibly important. Tow hitch as well. Some steps to get into the bed as well. And a rear exhaust that I actually am deciding on doing a single exit exhaust. A very simple one. Some ridiculously tiny hood vents. And now we're just working on the interior at this point. We're going to make it blue, yellow with some black, some metal, and some all sorts of different things. It's going to be a pretty cool interior, all things considered. And it's going to be a three-seater right-hand drive setup. Because I personally like making my vehicles different drive types all the time. Most of my vehicles are left-hand drive because, well, I'm from the United States and that's why I know most. But I do like making my vehicles left-hand drive from time to time because it spices things up. We're going to put it a, uh, I don't know, a dash-mounted transmission shifter so we, that we can fit three people in here. All that just to increase that practicality factor. We're going to give it some little nice touches to the thing right here, like some uh, vents in order to relieve engine pressure and all that. And yeah, we're going to give it some 4x4 decals, and here it is. My absolute beauty. Easily the most beautiful thing I've made in actually probably not too much time, but I think it's pretty cool, all things considered, because it's an off-road mini truck, and it's just beautiful. Absolutely, absolutely beautiful. It's a truly magnificent vehicle that I feel like everyone should at least appreciate in some capacity. And it's going to be called the Jimbo Caref because it is the smallest vehicle in the Caref series of trucks. And also this thing, I'm just calling it the Jimbo because it's really similar to Jimny. And now let's go to BMG Drive and let's go. OK, let's go. Let's go. OK, and we are definitely not winning in line three versus V8 is um, not exactly a good pair up because we're naturally aspirated. They're probably supercharged, all things considered. But yeah, we're doing pretty good, in my opinion. We're, of course, going to cut this corner because that's kind of what I do. And my goal, make it around the track in like one minute and 30 something seconds, maybe less. I'm not entirely sure how fast this thing's going to go around the track. So far, we're at about 33 seconds right now. We're doing pretty good right at the moment. And... Yeah, we, unlike them, we don't have to stay exclusively on the track. We can go off-road because we're designed to do that. And also, we do have all-terrain utility-ish tires on this thing, so it's probably not the best off-road experience. And, okay, the inside is pretty nice, all things considered. I think it's cool. There is some of the um, frames showing through the floor panels, which is a little disappointing, but yeah... At the very least, our interior is pretty nice other than that. And we also have three seats. Plenty of seats for me and two other people. And also, this truck handles really well, all things considered. It's taking this turn really well. And, best of all, we can accelerate like crazy. Which, uh, yeah, isn't exactly true, but... Hey, at least we finished in one piece, unlike some of my other vehicles. Like, I remember driving around this track in one vehicle, its wheel fell off. But yeah, 1 minute and 33 seconds, not the worst, but not the best. Now, we're going to be racing against my Turbine Thrasher wagon here. Not the actual Turbine Thrasher, that one's still having problems. And let's go! Okay, yeah, of course we're obviously going to lose because I feel like it's kind of obvious if you remember that vehicle. Because seriously, this thing is an utter beast of a truck, a micro truck, but it's not exactly a drag strip hero. 15.2 seconds is um, not exactly fast. I'm fairly certain my car could technically do better than that. And I have never taken it to the drag strip. So yeah, I don't know that for certain. Our reaction time, to say the least, was abysmal. And now we're racing against the K66 GT. Basically, my little K car that I made. Now, this thing technically has a higher top speed than this car. But it also has 63 horsepower, which is a whole lot less than us. 
and also they have nowhere near as much torque, so yeah, they're gonna lose, and they're gonna be dumb while doing it, and here we go, 15.2 seconds exactly, I wonder what they're gonna get, probably something really slow and pathetic, all things considered, something really, really laughable and pitiful, and let's see, Ha ha ha! You got nearly 18 seconds. That's pathetic. Our reaction time wasn't that good either. And now, here we go. We're racing the Uno Muso. Arguably one of my best sounding cars I've ever made in this game. And now, let's go! Okay, we should beat this thing. And yeah, we're beating them. We're beating them pretty good. Hopefully, they don't reach overdrive and somehow surpass us, which I don't think they're going to be able to do. But yeah. So far, we're winning, and we're doing pretty good. Once again, 15.2 seconds. And, yeah, let's see how they did. I'm pretty sure they probably got, like, 16 seconds or something like that. And let's see, 16.127, not too bad. We didn't have the best reaction time once again. That's probably going to be a recurring theme. But now let's drive something faster. More importantly, let's compete against something faster. A 600 horsepower, no roof, no windshield car, the Grusho Hata, and yeah, our startup time was abysmal. Absolutely just pathetic and abysmal. But hey, overall, I do feel like we're doing decently well for something this small and not powerful. But yeah, they got a 10.2 second at 139 miles per hour. Pretty darn good, all things considered. We didn't exactly do the best, but hey, at the very least, we tried. We tried, and our reaction time was the wor horrible, absolutely abominable. And now, let's race against the Lunatic Laganda, and yeah, this part is heavily sped up because of just how unbelievably slow this vehicle was to get to the line. And now let's go! Okay, I feel like it's kind of obvious that they're going to beat us because, um... Ever since the last view, I think that... Ever since the last car, I think that might actually start becoming a theme. Because, yeah, we're not exactly fast. They got a 12-second flat time, pretty much. 12.111, but still. We'll just call it 12 seconds flat, and... I just forget how small their car is. Our reaction time was nearly three quarters of a second, which is absolutely horrible. And now, let's race against the Truro Carif. What could possibly go wrong racing a truck with about four times the power with only about 50% more weight? Yeah, I, I think it's kind of obvious. We're gonna lose! We're gonna lose! Because it's obvious. It's just dumb to think we're even gonna beat them because, seriously, we are not super fast. And of course, we got our same time. They got 11.2 seconds, which is better than the Lunatic Lagonda, which is surprising, all things considered. That thing is so unbelievably light, and yet, it, yeah, of course our reaction time was terrible. Why wouldn't it be? And now, let's just go to our next opponent, which is the Rino Karef. I wonder just how fast this vehicle is going to be. It's totally like there's not a 550 horsepower V8 under there, and yeah, I can... Yeah, for a second, I couldn't even hear my own car, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and also, I'm recording these voiceovers while the video is completely mute, all things considered, so I can't tell if the vehicles are making tons of sound as I'm making these voiceovers. But yeah, 10.6 seconds. That is, that's somehow even better, all things considered. Yeah, the Turbine Thrasher Wagon currently holds the record for today's video, all things considered. And now, let's race against the Vuko Muso, the bus vehicle that I made. And hopefully, they don't beat us, because they don't have as much torque as us, but they do have more power, and, um... Yeah, why, why did I expect to beat them? They have 187 horsepower, we have about 150. I feel like it's kind of obvious that they're going to beat us because they're made of carbon fiber and we are not. I forgot that they were lighter as well. But yeah, 12.888 seconds for them is actually really, really pretty darn good, all things considered. It's a phenomenal time, all things considered, and I want to get closer to the vehicle just to compare sizes and... This vehicle surprisingly isn't too much larger than that vehicle. 
And yeah, our reaction time was better this time. But now, it's time to race against a behemoth. A vehicle that is utterly stupid in every sense of the word. Nearly 5,000 horsepower. And uh, yeah, most of it goes to torque. So um, yeah, not exactly the best startup, but... Still a ridiculously fast truck, all things considered. Able to out-tow literally every other vehicle in the entire game. I'm fairly certain it could probably stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with some semi-trucks. With a nearly 10-second flat quarter-mile time, yeah, they're pretty fast. As you could probably guess, our time also was not good. And now, we race against, I want to say this is the Evo Tark, because I don't, I can't see through the grill, but yeah, if this is, we're racing against our Cybertruck clone, and I, I forget just how tiny that thing is, like, it's surprisingly impractical for just how small it is, but hey, it is low to the ground and easily accessible for people who could bend their backs, and uh, yeah, they absolutely did not exit with grace. And now, I think it's time to get revenge for losing all those times. Yeah, how do you like that, you stupid EV? And yeah, of course we didn't do too well. And now, it's time to go to the tropical island to do some towing. This is because this thing can tow about, I have no idea. But yeah, this right here is a 5,000 pound trailer. Actually, it's 4,900 pounds, but let's just say it's 5,000 just for the sake of simplicity. It's 5,000 pounds, and we're going to be towing it to the resort, and then we're going to do some off-road testing, and then the view is probably going to be over after that, and some parts might be sped up a little bit, because I don't want this video to be like 35 minutes long, because off-roading isn't exactly my best strong suit in this game. It usually takes a bit of time for me to do so, and also, this thing is heavy. It's not exactly like this trailer is nothing. It's not exactly like I'm towing it with the torque. Master, because if I were, this wouldn't even be a challenge. This would be like everyday normal stuff, and oh no, transition. Okay, now that we're out of that pickle, we can finally get back onto the road and start towing this to the resort. And yeah, towing this thing uphill is not good, but oh, I, th I think the um, traction control is acting all weird and stuff like that. It's, it's acting crazy, and it's constantly preventing the vehicle from doing anything. So yeah, we're gonna do this completely tractionless, aidless. We're gonna do this thing without any help from any onboard computers. Fully analog. And here we go with this thing. This is an utterly insane experience, all things considered, using such a tiny little vehicle to tow such a big thing, which is carrying, like, I want to say, like, 1,400 kilograms of lumber and all that. So, yeah, not exactly a ridiculously crazy thing, but not exactly a simple task either, and... Yeah, of course, we're struggling to get up the hill some. This is, after all, a gigantic load that we're carrying. And, yeah, the interior of the vehicle is pretty nice, in my opinion. And we also get to go down here, which leads us to a... Um, we are riding against the guardrail, but, hey, we, at least we didn't go into the abyss down there. And now, let's go into the tunnel, because it's a beautiful, beautiful tunnel, and I can hear the sound of the mighty inline three rumbling and echoing in the tunnel, and we're gonna reach some truly deadly breakneck speeds in this thing, going, oh, 50 miles per hour! No way! 50! You're going too fast! You're going too fast! Oh no! Oh no! And no! Oh. That, that could have gotten significantly worse, but hey, at least we have all of our wheels, the trailer has its wheels still, and on the bright side, we can at the very least still continue driving. It's not like we broke our vehicle or anything like that, and yeah, I'm gonna keep going straight. Actually, no, I'm gonna take that turn. I'm not gonna go straight. That would take the very, very, very long and inconvenient route, and I don't want to risk breaking the trailer or the cargo inside, which, if you're wondering, is just some lumber. That is literally all we're carrying. It's not like we're carrying priceless furniture, because... If we were, we would not be taking this little rinky-dinky little toy truck, and we wouldn't be towing it with that. And also, we wouldn't be driving like this if it carried priceless furniture. 
it would probably be airshipped or shipped by the water. Like, quite literally shipped. And yeah, so far we're doing pretty good. We just passed by that, which I don't know where that leads because I barely ever really spend time in this map, even though it's probably one of my favorite Beam and G Drive maps, all things considered. It's desolate, doesn't have a lot of people, or even activity, all things considered. And best of all, you can do all sorts of jungle crawling and stuff like that, and I can improve on building the best off-road vehicle possible, which this thing is not. It has the all-terrain tires, not the chunky off-road. So, yeah, later on, we're going to need to test how good this thing is at off-roading. From the experience that I have done so far, it's pretty decent at off-roading, and it's pretty good at getting traction and towing and all things like that. But it's not exactly the best vehicle when it comes to, you know, just being a off-road exclusive vehicle. It's probably not going to beat a Jeep Wrangler because of power and torque and all that other stuff and traction. It might not beat that, but one thing that it will absolutely beat a Jeep Wrangler in is fuel economy and reliability. This thing will easily beat a Jeep Wrangler in both of those categories because it's simple. It's based off of the Dar Sanat, aka the most reliable car I've ever made, and I know I've brought that up twice, but it's true. It is the most reliable thing I've made. Like, the engine and automation and, oh, yeah, um, let's get out of this predicament and then I'll explain the engine really quickly and just explain how reliable it is after this. And, well, here we are. We're finally out of our predicament, and now I'm going to tell you about the engine. The engine got a reliability score of, I want to say, about 146, which is um, about 10 points higher than that one time I tried to build the most reliable engine possible based off of an old tutorial. That engine got 136. And now, we have no trailer, and, if you could notice, we have traction control on, and we're driving normally. Turns out I just needed to restart the game for that. And now, we can drive like there's nothing in the world that can stop us. We can drive without a care in the world. We can drive like a maniac going nearly 70 down these roads in a teeny tiny little tin box. Actually, no, the whole thing is in a steel, so it's a steel box. And all things considered, this is, thing is probably more of a cyber truck than the actual cyber truck because, well, it's made entirely out of steel. And it's also a truck. It can actually do truck things, unlike the cyber truck. And I know those arguments are old and stuff like that, but I, if there's any Tesla mega fan watching this, I just want you to know that the cyber truck is not a good truck. It can barely do what this thing can do. And keep in mind, this thing has like about, I want to say, an eighth of the horsepower of the cyber truck. And yet it is so much more capable because it's not overly technical. It's reliable, it's simple, and most importantly, colorful. It's cool. It has yellow all over it. It's small, it's cute, it's cuddly, and it is also rugged all at the exact same time. And these roads right here are barely a challenge for this thing. Actually, now that I think about it, I think every car I've ever made, except for, like, the ridiculously stupid cars that barely function on normal roads could do this. So, yeah, this thing isn't exactly doing anything Herculean, but it's not exactly doing something basic. It's doing something a little more advanced than most Jeep owners are probably capable of doing. It's called taking your vehicle designed specifically for going off-road, off-road. I, I know it's a horrifying concept for a lot of Jeep owners because of just how poorly built Jeeps are, but this thing is different. We spent like $15 billion developing this thing to be just as reliable as you could possibly imagine. And yeah, rightfully so it is. And okay, and wait a minute wait wait let me go inside real quick let me go inside the vehicle and i did not know the turn signals in this game actually made sound that is actually incredible all things considered i never noticed that and it's really really cool all things considered and now i can finally finally live knowing that this game is 
truly realistic. Because, hey, the turn signals do at least make sound. That's something I never noted about this game. Something I didn't know was even included, which is pretty nice, all things considered. And now, let's go up this road right here, because this is the road up to the top of the mountain where we can do some more extreme off-roading and stuff like that, while also having a risk of falling into a pit of doom, which is a lake up there. I don't exactly know about the lake too much. All I know is there is a lake up there, and it's disgusting. It's a disgusting, gross, brine lake or whatever. I... It's been a couple months since I've been in this map, all things considered. I barely play in this map. I mostly just play in the grid map or in the city or, you know, the desert and stuff like that. I play in, like, open areas and stuff like that and just drive around like a maniac in this game. That's mainly what I do. I don't exactly play the game for story or anything, but... I'm probably going to try and at least do that at some point because I've seen some videos on it and it looks pretty fun, all things considered. And I'm probably going to do that because why not? I do like doing whatever I want in video games, but at the same time, I do like video games of set stories as well. Well, okay, not all of them, but I like some video games of set stories. Yeah, not all of them, but I like some. And now... Let's just continue going up the mountain because this is a pretty nice drive, all things considered. We just went on to a dirt patch and we don't even have lines splitting the road between one way and the other. Nope, you just have to drive up this road at your own risk. Hopefully no one... Okay, I did not know that down there. I'm not even sure if that was like an entrance to a trail or not. I know that is, and we're actually going to go down that trail, believe it or not, because I am curious on what is down this way. Like, seriously, I want to know what is down this way, what could possibly be there, and the view from the side is absolutely beautiful, all things considered, and oh, um, we nearly just went off the edge. That would be absolutely horrible, and I'd be really mad if we did, but yeah. We go down a little, and here is that disgusting, horrible pond that I described earlier. And let's drive around the edge, and ugh, yuck, that water is nasty, all things considered. Let's put it into 4x4 low mode, pretty much low gear range. And now let's drive around by nearly flooring it and making sure we have plenty of power to not fall into the pond, which... Looks like it has a sheer drop-off straight to the bottom, which is absolutely horrifying when you think about it. Like, if you're scared of swimming in deep pools and stuff, this pond would be the things of your nightmares, all things considered. And oh, um, oh, we are definitely going too close to the edge. I am gonna try and go back up there and, um, yeah, not do that because I personally do not want to end up there. We'll turn off traction control so we get the best speed possible. And, ooh, what's up there? I'm actually kind of curious about what's up there because I kind of want to go up there. I just want to see what's up here and... Wait a minute. Did we just find our match? Did we find something this thing cannot handle? Like, this thing was able to orbit around that pond without falling in. That horrible, horrible pond. It was able to go around it without falling in. If I did that in the Torque Master, the Torque Master would probably fall in because it's probably too wide to go around it, all things considered. And, uh, yeah, this is about as high as we can go while we're up here. Pretty sad, and, hey, at least the view was absolutely incredible, all things considered. We have some truly, truly just incredible views in this game. Like, seriously, this game, I don't feel it gets enough appreciation for its wonderful scenery and oh. Yeah, we're flipping over, going down the mountain and all that. That is not good, not good. And now transition, and here we are. We're at the near bottom of the mountain, particularly we're at a path that leads back up. And I'm going to take go up this path just to show off the off-road capabilities because I don't really think I did too good of a job showing that earlier. So yeah, let's go off-road and let's mainly just show you what this thing is capable of. It's a truly incredible car, all things considered. We're going somewhere that most Jeeps will never go. Somewhere that most vehicles will never go, whether it's a 4Runner or a Hyundai Santa Fe. I don't even think people take those off-road anymore. I think they're not, now they're just soccer mom mobiles. 
But yeah, what we're doing right now is we're taking this thing off-road. We're going on an extreme adventure. We're going on a place where a Suzuki Jimny should go. And we're doing it in style with a truck bed. And hey, we even got some extra fuel so we'll never be stranded. We can always drive back to civilization if needed. And yeah, this is a pretty dark, scary trail, all things considered. But I am having some fun driving off-road in some mud. Driving through the mud like a madman. And it is fun to drive through mud in this game, all things considered. I should definitely do it more, the, rather than just driving on asphalt and stuff like that. Because the mud is a really fun thing in this game. And driving on rocks is pretty cool, especially when the suspension is able to move as this vehicle's suspension can. Now, I do know this vehicle is not the best off-road vehicle, not even the best one I've made. Downer would probably still go to the 4SBG, no, the 4SB-Chihish, all things considered. That vehicle is an absolute beast at off-roading that I don't think any other vehicle has been able to surpass. But hey, ooh, this little hill, let's see, can we go up here, can we go up here and, um, no, no we can't, and it's really sad. I'm sad that we can't go up there and, um, hey, at least we stuck the landing when trying to flip our vehicle over. Nice. We flipped the landing. We didn't flip on our roof. That's wonderful. That's magical. And, well, that's pretty much all I have to say for today, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Anyway, that's all. Bye!